chapter three in chapter three we're going to learn about financial forecasting and we're going to specifically learn how to build forecasts using pro forma tool so pro forma tool or pro forma statements is the most widely used tool to help predict and estimate what would a current company need in the future period so if if would they need more money or would they generate more money so both of those are use cases that we need to anticipate especially if you're a banker and trying to give a loan to a company you want to build forecasts about the company using its historical records and you build this pro forma statement to find out hey the the person owning the company is asking you for this loan is that loan worth giving if it's not worth giving you 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 don't give them the loan right so pro forma statements helps us uh, if you are a banker to give or not to give a loan based on how the company is doing also as a business owner let's say you are the owner you can build pro forma statements to find out what are the alternatives that are there so that i can handle the future of my company better for example you can find out quickly that, hey, your company is deteriorating in a pretty bad way. So then you can make changes, right? So pro forma statements not only allows the banker to make a decision on whether to give you a loan or not to give you a loan, but also if you are an owner, you can find out what are some of the hot areas, what, what are some of the areas that need improvement so that I can get a loan if I need to get a loan and you can actually improve the operations. So let's get into it how to build pro forma statements and using that we will be financial forecasting experts all right so let's do this so and and a word of caution which is you know these are not 100 percent prediction of success meaning if you plan using pro forma statements are you guaranteed that you are covered and then are you guaranteed as a banker that this loan will not go south no so, and that's where this quote from the textbook I really like, it says, planning is the substitution of error for chaos. Meaning, if you don't plan, then you are already in a pretty bad spot. You are in an error situation. You are setting yourself to fail. But if you do plan, there is a possibility that you may succeed. And that possibility that you may succeed has a lot of chaos, right? You're trying to try out a few things. You may it may work, it may not work. So forecasting is an art, and it's uh, it's something that helps us deeply understand how things are going. But it doesn't mean that it's accurate hundred um, percent. And this is something that we need to get better at to using because every corporate action, every financial decision, whether to give a discount to uh, your uh, suppliers if they uh, you know uh, pay you. Uh, if you if they give you the product sooner or if you want to give discounts to your um, accounts receivable if they pay you in the first 10 days that has an impact on your finances so it's important that every action that you make how much inventory you hold everything has an Im impact so that we need to understand what is that impact so that's what pro forma helps us right so and there are two ways there are two possibilities for a company in the future in terms of its finances it could be doing really well meaning generates extra cash then you have a problem too you have a problem of allocation if you don't allocate your money well your return on capital employed will go bad your growth will actually not go up and maybe it'll reduce because there'll be slack built in but the second piece where pro forma helps is when you need more cash meaning you're using more cash than what you're generating then you need pro forma statements right so if you have a funding problem so look at this part right if you have a funding problem then you need pro forma statements for sure you also need it if you're generating extra cash so that you can do better so now we know what the context is if you're trying a banker to give a loan you have a funding issue you turn as an operator if you're an owner you want to build pro forma statements right to find out and predict and to be in a better future so there's just five steps to doing pro forma statements. How to do it? Let's let's go through this. So there are these five steps, uh, actually six, six steps. So let's look at that, right? So how do you do pro forma? First step is you look at the historical company's financial data. Look at the last five years if possible. Once you get that five years of data, yearly data, you you 
you find out what is the percentage growth in each of those areas, right? And especially take a look at the sales growth to start with, right? Uh, it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be slowing, it could be accelerating, right? Then tie all of those percentage growths to a common yardstick. Percentage of sales is a really good yardstick. You were, you're trying to say the top line, the sales, how much money is coming in and what is, what's happening to the bottom, uh, bottom line eventually, right? Like, is my inventory growing? Is my account receivable growing? What's happening? So you then tie, get the percentage of all of those rows to be the percentage of sales, right? And then you test sensitivity. You say, hey, what if each of these variables go up and down by 10%? Then you try to find out, hey, what, uh, what, 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 how would these metrics change if, if let's say inventory went up by 10%? So you test for sensitivity. And then you compare with your competitor and then you find trends and patterns to say, hey, look, there are some deeper issues here, right? And then you, then you will, you will, you will build some sort of a minimum and some sort of a maximum of a ratio as to what you, you are okay with as a leader, as an owner, as a banker, and say, hey, look, these are the top three or four things. Maybe your account receivable is going up, your inventory is going up, your um, debt to equity is going up, right? So you build those ratios and then you say, hey, these are my lower bonds and these are my upper bounds. And those are the rules that you come up with to say, hey, look, I will only give you loan if this, this, and this, you're gonna, you know, these milestones you will hit and I'll give you loan incrementally and things like that, right? Uh, similarly, if you're a bit new business owner, you, you come in and you, you look at each of these ratios and you try to make improvements in each one of them. So then you calculate the deficit, right? If you're, if you're uh, once, you, once you project into the future based on the percentage growth, you know if you're gonna generate more cash, you're gonna use up more cash. So the formula for deficit is you add up the total assets minus the liabilities minus the owner's equity, right? Um, and so two tips in these six steps is first, ensure that you capture the peak period, uh, meaning take the whole year. Um, and if you're doing just the last quarter, then you want to make sure that you, you factor in the full year because the first quarter might have the peak and then the last next three quarters might be like at the very downturn. So make sure you understand the business cycle and the peaks activity period and you capture that. And then make sure you understand the interest expense uh, is added, tax deduction is removed, dividend deduction is removed as you iterate through this, right? So this is an example of a one year pro forma. So meaning look at 2011 financials of a company and try to do 2012, but you not only look at 2011, you look at the last four or five years come up with the percentages and then you forecast, right? And then you say, hey, I expect 25% increase in sales. So 2012 will look like this. I expect 86% um, uh, of sales would be cost of goods. So then you will, based on those ratios that you calculated from, from the past, you can pre assume that they will, they will be the same ratios of the future. Using past to predict the future, there is a gotcha. That's why I told you it's an art. So you at least it gives you a, a deeper understanding of where you are as a company. So that's a good thing. So you add comments in terms of what ratios are you expecting, if the tax bracket goes up and down, and then you will you will say, hey, look, at the minimum, I need 18 days of sale because that's what my business really needs. So you'll have some minimum and maximum periods, and you'll say, hey, I'll improve my ratios by this much, right? And then you will get the net deficit, right? Based on the formula above. So based on percentages, you will get the future values. Based on future values, you will get the deficit, right? Meaning if you continue to do what you are doing, this is where you will end up. So there's one gotcha here. And uh, as you can imagine, the amount of debt that you take on, the amount of new external funding that you take on impacts your um, interest expense. But the interest expense also now depends on the debt. So there's a circular dependency, right? And so let's look at that. Uh, and how to solve that, right? So if you see this example, uh, interest expense here is gonna be row 23 will be dependent, uh, we, we'll have a factor to play in external funding. So how is it dependent? So row 23 depends on 40, 40 depends on 38, 38 depends on 28, 28, 26, 24, 23, right? So it's a circular dependency. So how do you solve the circular dependency in Excel? And so one, one way is for you to just iterate and say, hey, how do you get to get to zero, right, where you where you actually get the right funding, but there's a better way. And the way you do that in Excel is through uh, enabling iterative calculations in Excel. So you calculate, so you, you will get this warning when you have a circular reference, because as we see, 23 and 40 are circularly dependent, 
um, what you can do is you can go to Excel options, formulas, calculate options, and enable iterative calculation. And so then the circular reference will be, uh, warning will be removed. But in, in a sense, what it's doing is trying to take a guess and then see how far off it is and then get, take, make a better guess. You can do this manually, but you can make Excel do it. So make Excel do it, right? And you can automate, automate. So how do you make this forecast even better? There are many ways to make this better. First is you do sensitivity analysis to say, hey, look, I'm, I think uh, my account receivable for the next two years will actually get bad because of this COVID situation or whatever that one variable is. And then you see what the stress factors are, what are the strong impacts. But the other way is to say, you, you look at a bigger scenario. It says, hey, look, I expect uh, Amazon to come into my business, so I think my margins will be squeezed. So that's a big scenario. Or you can think of things like, hey, um, I have a big customer, I think I'm gonna lose that customer. Then you'll have a lot of variables that will go with that scenario. So then you do scenario analysis, sensitivity analysis. And again, there's there's gonna be a limit to when you say, hey, I get it, you know, I, I can't really predict the future, so I'm gonna stop at certain points. You can do scenario analysis, you can do sensitivity analysis. You can even go as far as using a, a simulation software, which is basically give you probability distribution in terms of like what outcomes to expect, right? So remember at the end of it, at some point you have to stop, but uh, it's not the plan that matters because all plans will, will be wrong, but the planning is what's important. So as long as you plan, you're gonna be fine, right? So there are many ways and alternatives to not doing as extensive work as pro forma. You can do cash flow based forecasts, like just look at your cash flow. We, we looked at in the, in the second chapter, like how you have cash budgets, right? And how, how you do your uses and um, um, sources and you find out what the deficits are, right? So the level of detail goes down in cash flow compared to uh, pro forma, uh, and it even goes even below in cash budgets. So I'm not gonna go into these details. Let's just master pro forma and then just keep it simple. Uh, the duration uh, typically for, for these tools at the bottom, cash budgets, they're done more frequently. So you can do it quickly, but it has low data, low insights. Um, and so the detail is lower, but you can do them quickly. So there are many alternative tools like pro forma, like the, in the textbook, it briefly mentions cash flow based forecast and cash budgets based forecast. In essence, like so what's the context of all of this, right? So in, in large companies and even in small companies, what's the context? Where does this all fit in? It, it all fits into this third step, right? Where uh, the first step is the business is the, the, the CEO, the board, the executives, they're deciding, hey, look, for our strategy, uh, our strategy as a company is we need to be a dominant player in this market. So we need to increase our market share. So that that so the first discussion is around strategy. They decide like what is the goal. I like so, so a simple example could be for someone who is a student. Hey, my goal, my strategy is I want to become a doctor. I want to become a teacher. That's a goal. It's a pretty abstract. It's an end result. So that's the goal. Similarly, business leaders will have a goal. Say, hey, I want to be the leader in this domain of ed tech, right? So I want to be the best in this, right? So what is, uh, and then they'll say, I need X percent market share by this year. So that's that's where it starts. And then, then, then the divisional organizational leaders come in and say, hey, okay, I'm going to take that big, hairy, audacious goal and convert that into a plan. Say, hey, what are my key performance indicators? What are my, how am I gonna actually uh, show that in the next four years, I'll actually get there. So they'll say the customers that I'll acquire in this month, that month, this quarter, next quarter. So then they break it down. So the goal, the strategy is, and then broken down into plans. Similarly, if you decide you wanna be a doctor, you don't just become a doctor. You just say, hey, I'm gonna start first do my college and then I'm gonna do my advanced degree. And so that's the detail of the plan. So we start with the goal, the strategy, then the plan. The third place is where financial forecasting actually helps. It actually puts the dollar value to every decision that you make, right? If you wanna become a doctor, you know you're gonna take a lot of debt. Similarly, if you want to build a market share into this position, into this company, or into this domain, you need to be ready for putting in the money or the capital or the budget, the number of people, all of that. So that is where financial forecasting helps. It tells you like, hey, if you, if you decide to go down this path, it's, this is the money that's needed. These are the things you need to change to actually get there in a sustainable way. And so financial forecast is the key. It helps convert big ideas, goals into reality. It gives legs to planning. So financial forecasting, pro forma, very, very, very important. And now you're an expert.